precious people of God, we are glad that we are with you again today. Yes. And today, like every episode, God's presence is with us Amen. and the word of the Lord prevails. Today, my wife will be bringing us the text and introduce the topic. Uh, we just want you to come along with us. Yes. Amen. 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 It promises to be a great episode. We bless the Lord and we are excited about today's topic. Today's topic is when the unexpected happens, what do you do? When the unexpected happens, what do you do? We felt a tug in our spirits to share this with us today. There has been a lot of happenings around the world recently. And to some that are named of the household of God, the unexpected has happened. But you were not told, you did not know. You would say, but the Spirit did not reveal this to me. But what would you do? Some episodes ago, when we talked about the expectant Jesus, we had mentioned how Jesus himself expected to find fruit on this fig tree that had lots of leaves, which we are told appeared as if it would be fruitful. So he was expectant, but alas, on getting to the tree, there were no fruits. And you can go watch that episode to see what was the response of Jesus and how did that response of Jesus give glory to God. So brethren, today we will be talking about what you would do should something happen that you did not know about it beforehand. Like my husband said in that episode, we can never be greater than the master. So, if it happened to Jesus, we should learn what to do ahead of time. Amen. Amen. The text today is taken from 1 Kings 17, 17 to 18. 1 Kings 17, 17 to 18. And it says, some time later, the woman's son became sick. He grew worse and worse, and finally he died. Then she said to Elijah, O oh man of God, what have you done to me? Have you come here to point out my sins and kill my son? Amen. 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 When the unexpected happened, what do you do? The text which my wife has just read, uh, it's about Elijah and the widow uh, that fed him during the famine. And if you remember at 1 Kings chapter 7, the introductory verses of 1 Kings chapter 7, Elijah was introduced to us with the power and ability to hear the word of God. In fact, the first five verses uh, talk about Elijah, who was the Tishbite uh, in Gilead, declared to the whole of Israel, saying, as surely as the Lord God of Israel lives, the God I serve, there will be no dew or rain during the next few years until I give the word. And he went on even uh, in verse 5, so Elijah did as the Lord told him and camped beside Kerit Brook. And I love the complete Jewish version. It says, Elijah acted according to the word of God. Amen. So here we see Elijah acting according to the word of God. So what we are talking about today, when the unexpected happened, assumes that you know how to hear the voice of God. Do you know how to hear the voice of God? Well, my wife and I were discussing, looking at Acts chapter 8 through 11, and phenomenally you see, even though the Acts of Apostles is regarded as the Acts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Acts, people say it's actually the Acts of the Holy Spirit. And we see the Holy Spirit demonstrating how he talks to people and how people 
distinctly hear his voice. Yes. So this unexpected happening sometimes happen to people who hear the voice of God regularly. That's what we are talking to you about. Yes. The fig tree that my wife referred to in the expectant Jesus episode. Go check it again. Jesus had the voice of God. So if you look at those, uh, take a panoramic view of those Acts 8 to 11, started with Paul who was going to uh, kill some disciples again and then the voice of the Lord came. He, he, he saw the bright light that stopped him and God spoke to him and God told him clearly that I am Jesus whom you are persecuting and you will preach this gospel and you will be my messenger to the Gentiles. Yes. You will suffer some things. So Saul, which later became Paul, had the voice of God clearly. And then Ananias was there too. Ananias had the voice of God go and meet Saul of Tarsus at a particular street. It was mentioned specifically the street where he would meet Saul praying. Yeah. Amen. So he went there. And then fast forward, we see God again in that Acts, uh, the chapters we are referring to. We see Cornelius in Acts chapter 10 praying fervently to God and but he wasn't saved and God spoke to him. Cornelius had the voice of God but yet he was not yet saved and God instructed him send for Simon the rock. Uh, God has to distinguish Simon the rock from Simon the tanner that was the yeah. host yes. of uh, Peter because Peter at that time if you read back in Acts chapter 9 uh, Peter was already uh, in the house of uh, Acts uh, of Simon the Tanner. So God spoke clearly to Cornelius. He had sent for Peter and he did. And meanwhile, Peter too, as he was there, was ready to eat. And that vision you saw where the, uh, he saw the reptiles that were unclean to him. God told him specifically, eat and kill and eat, arise, eat, arise, kill and eat. And uh, he said, no, Lord, uh, you don't say no to the Lord. Whatever God tells you to do, you do. Yes. But Peter had the voice of God. While he was still wondering what's going on with this vision he saw, he had distinctly the voice of God again. Peter, get up, three men are waiting for you. Go with them to uh, the house of Cornelius. And he went. So hearing the voice of God is very, very important. So coming back to our text, we see Elijah too. He had the word of God. He heard from God when he declared uh, there will be no rain, no dew. And then he heard from the word of God too. Go and meet a particular widow. And according to the word of God, everything went according to schedule. And then in verse 17, which is a text which my wife read. We saw the woman's son became sick. He grew worse and worse, and finally he died. Then she said to Elijah, woman of God, what have you done to me? Have you come here to point out my sins and kill my son? That took Elijah by surprise. He didn't know that was an unexpected that happened. To the widow too, that was an unexpected thing that happened. And my Lord, like yes. we said, what do you do when the unexpected happens? Like we always say, don't react, respond. But we see Elijah reacting here mm. because this woman, the widow, reacted mm. and accused Elijah, Elijah, literally accusing God. Oh, is it because of my sin? That's why you killed my son? No, that was a reaction. And I would like to read yes. verse 20, yeah. what exactly mm. Elijah said, but this is the mm. New Living Translation. Mm. Verse 20 of uh, 1 Kings 17. Mm. Then Elijah cried out to the Lord, mm. O Lord, my God, why have you brought tragedy to this widow who has opened her home to me, causing her son to die? Mm. Doesn't that sound like... Uh, Adam 
and Eve, mm. when uh, the Lord asked Adam, mm. what, what, what is this? And he pointed to Eve and said, is the woman you gave me? Mm. Here we see the widow pointing at Elijah, mm. accusing Elijah, mm. and Elijah turning around mm. to accuse God. Mm. What kind of response mm. do we have? Mm. Let's go on, my so, so, my queen, that, so we see Elijah reacting not responding. responding because God we know God is a good God yes God would not kill the son of this woman that he gave as a sign and testimony to Elijah and like, so so yes. then talking about Elijah as you have mentioned my mm -hmm. Lord so Elijah himself questioned God mm -hmm. and when you began this teaching you had shown us mm. how God has spoken to Elijah. Mm. He had the voice of God mm. and he declared mm. things and was following God step by step. Mm. So if something happens suddenly, mm. how do we then respond to that? Mm. Elijah questioned God. Mm. However, he cried to God mm. and did the things he did, laid himself on the boy mm. and uh, the boy came back to life. We know the story and gave the son back to the woman. At the end of the story, the woman cried. She said, now I know that you are a man sent from God. Now, could it be that even though that tragedy was allowed and had happened, it was supposed to be to the glory of the Lord. It was supposed to further confirm to this woman mm -hmm. who had partaken out of the miracles of God through this man of God. Mm -hmm. The cruise of oil never ran dry. Mm -hmm. the, the, the flour never finished. Mm -hmm. They kept eating through the famine, but she was still not convinced yeah. that this was a true man of God. Mm -hmm. Remember that she was not from Israel. Mm -hmm. She was from Zarephath. Mm -hmm. Our Lord said, are there many widows, are, are there not many widows in Israel? Yet the Lord sent Elijah to Zarephath. So Zarephath was not in Israel. So she was looking at Elijah, still needing to be convinced of the source that this man really was from. And that scenario came. Even though Elijah was not informed about it, he needed to have continued to trust God rather than question God. And that takes us back, my love, to people who uh, similarly did such things, like Moses. Now, Moses did not himself directly question God. But there was this situation in Numbers chapter 13 where the children of Israel wanted to know for themselves what that land that God was going to give them look like. Yeah. So they kept talking among themselves and wanting to know, and at the end of the day, they came up with this idea that their leaders should go and spy out the land. Mm -hmm. And they suggested uh, their thoughts. They shared their thoughts with Moses. Mm -hmm. And what are we told that Moses did? He went to God, which was a good step. He went to God to ask what to do. But the answer of the Lord to Moses in Numbers 13, uh, I believe verses 1 and 2, is what is concerning, is what brings this topic out. When something happens and is unexpected, what do you do? Do you continue to trust God or do you uh, begin to second guess God? Do you begin to doubt God? This is the same God that had brought them out through all the plagues that were in Egypt yes. and all the miracles of the plague. is the same God that opened the Red Sea yes. and caused them to walk on dry ground. Yes. It's the same God that killed and made their enemies drown in the same Red Sea. It's the same God that caused food to come from heaven, whether it be manna or whether it be meat, the kale. It's the same God that brought water out of the rocks. It is the same God that they were now doubting. And why was this God doing all that? It was to take them yeah, to, to that the promised land. land. So how doubting or second guessing 
that move was a big deal. And God answered Moses in Numbers 13. He said, send for yourself men. Send yourself men to the land of Canaan. Now, the way that part is translated shows that God was saying, send the men because you want to do so. That wasn't the voice of God. That wasn't God saying, do it. But it's like, if you want to do that, if you want to second guess me, then go ahead. But it is a move you are taking of yourself because you are in taking that step, you are doubting me. You see, and the real translation of it in Hebrew lets us know that the men, send yourself men. The men in that uh, translation is talking about men, physical men. Unlike the true uh, the translation of men, which is ish, which is it's physical and spiritual men. Mm -hmm. But in this translation, God removed the spiritual and mm -hmm. sent, sent, sent the physical men. Mm -hmm. So we are seeing here that God does not love the reaction of being second guessed. Mm -hmm. So, and they went and we know the story. Out of the 12, only two knew that no matter what they met in that land, God, who had taken all these steps so far, was definitely going to complete the journey. He was going to give them that land, no matter the giants there. So the same thing, yeah. when we do not, the expected, unexpected happens, what do we do? Do we second guess God or do we move ahead Amen. and trust God? And Amen. like my wife has just, uh, you know, explain it to us uh, so that we can see the trend when the unexpected happens. What do you do? Do you react or you respond? Elijah reacted, but later on he picked up and prayed and God that is true and faithful Amen. restored that son. And this same Elijah, remember, Fast forward, when Jezebel threatened him, again, he picked on the words of Jezebel to tell God, I, I, I am ready to die because Jezebel threatened that he was going to kill him because he had killed the prophets of Baal, picking human words and leaving God's word. When the unexpected happened, whose word do you pick up first? you should pick up the word of God. And like Moses, we saw too, in another part, when the, these same children of Israel provoked him, the Bible records he spoke unadvisedly with his lips. And that was why he couldn't enter the promised land. So you have a choice. When the unexpected happens, what do you do? You should respond. And by the grace of God, in the next episode, we are going to be showing you the men that responded, not reacted. Though, like I said, by and by, Elijah, Moses, they got along, but that's not the perfect will of God for you. God wants you to know, like my wife said, God, the same God that looked at the children of Israel and knew how many years they have served in slavery and promised them the deliverer. And even the deliverer himself, which was in the person of Moses, used by God, this man came and said, let's go and examine what God has promised us. Do you doubt God, what God has said? Take God for his word. Believe God for his word. Even though when the unexpected happen, trust him that he will see you through and he will still speak to you. Graciously, he spoke to Elijah. Graciously, he spoke to Moses and they were able to do what God expected, but it could be smoother than that. And that's what we want you to experience. Come with us in the next episode as we look at it. But again, today we would like to pray with you so that wherever you are, stop second-guessing God. He that has started the good work in you, that's what the scripture says, he is faithful. He will bring it to pass. So if something happens out of the ordinary, don't stop there. Don't pack it up. Some people have said, how can this happen to me as a child of God? No. God allows things at times because all things 
all things will work together for the good of those who stay focused, for the good of those who have been praying, who have been consistently following Him. And that's what we believe should be your portion. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you, Father, for those who are listening to us, that, Father, in any situation where the unexpected has happened, that their faith will rise up. They will remember the good things that you have been doing and the greater things that you promised ahead of them. Even there might be a comma, there might be a pause right now, but, Lord, ahead you have told them you are taking them to the promised land. You are a great and faithful God. And you fulfill that which you have promised them in Jesus' name. Amen. amen and amen. It's been a great pleasure for my wife and I to come your way again to empower you, you to fulfill your God-given destiny. Amen. amen.